Good evening. You're watching Straight Talk with Eugene Chan. Our guest tonight is the Secretary for Housing, Ms. Winnie Ho. She is an architect by profession and has been with the government for 30 years, attaining the position of Director of Architectural Services in 2020. Most notably, she was pivotal in the recent construction of the quarantine facilities and temporary hospitals used for COVID management. Welcome, Winnie. Welcome, Eugene. Right. Winnie, you have been the Secretary for Housing for the past two months, and I'm sure the history of housing shortage was much longer when you, but that you were aware that it was much longer when you accepted the appointment. Yes. During um, our Chief Executive, Mr. John Lee's leadership campaign, he pledged to increase the city's housing supply. Yes. And on the 1st of July, our presidency described it as a key task for the new administration. Yes. As for the, the title of the show, that are you able to reverse the long-standing trend of housing shortage? Can you deliver? This is a very, very important duty. And I think about it um, very deeply when I um, uh, have decided and determined to take up this position as the Secretary for Housing. Um, when Mr. John Lee introduced his um, principal officials on, um, in front of the media, um, I think I have already decided to take up this um, challenge. And um, I have uh, used um, uh, three strategies um, to tackle the problem. Right. Just now when you said you, you, were, you were determined to, to solve this problem, but actually what went through your mind? Because people say this is a daunting task. For the last 25 years, this has been, always been a Hong Kong problem. Yes. So what makes you so sure you'll be able to deliver when you took up the position? Well, um, I think one of the uh, very important um, driving force um, inside me to take up this duty is that um, Hong Kong is such an advanced uh, metropolitan city. When you still see so many people living in such a poor condition, um, it's, it, it's quite um, heartbroken in a way. Uh, I've been visiting these um, people in the subdivided flats and um, families living in very, very small room. Um, they have to do everything within that very small space. The children have to do homework on the bed. They even have to share the bed for various facilities. And you see um, people, um, um, elderly persons living in a, in a very tiny space. So this is the, the, the driving force um, that uh, make me take up this um, challenge. And um, the, 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 the strategies that uh, we have in mind is that the first very important strategy is focus on the speed how to speed up the construction and how to increase the quantity of, of the supply. All right, Secretary, in the last government, um, there were two bureaus. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. it was Bureau for Transport and Housing before. Now it's split up into two dedicated bureaus. Yes. Being it on its own, is it helping your job? Yes, definitely, definitely. I think the transport and housing, it's a huge problem. Uh, the workload is huge and there are so many things happening each day that takes up a lot of time of the former secretary. I think um, separating transport and housing so that I can, you know, dedicate myself and, and have all, all my time, all my efforts into this um, very um, important subject uh, uh, would definitely help me to think deeper and more focused. Right. Um, you know, when Frank Chan, the previous Secretary for Housing Transport, was on our show last year, yes. we know that there are about 250,000 people on a 5.9 year waiting list to go to public housing. Mm -hmm. And the average Hong Kong person has to save every cent for 20 years mm -hmm. to accumulate for the, uh, the actual deposit for a house. Mm -hmm. Is this still the situation right now in 2022? Um, now, the um, average waiting time has dropped a bit from the peak of um, 6.1 year to 6 year. Right. I hope that we can keep the, tra uh, the, the, the trend and we hope that uh, when our housing policy was uh, announced later, people would, uh, uh, would, would know the determination of the government to turn around and um, keep lowering this uh, average waiting time. And so that um, this housing problem, um, we will show to the people that um, it's finally being managed. Of course, it will take some time to, to digest the um, you know, much needed um, 
uh, uh, public housing. Right. Um, we need, as you know, the, 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 the actual solution that Frank proposed was to increase the percentage ratio of public and private housing from the previous 60 to 40 mm -hmm. to 70 to 30. Yeah. And they have identified 350 hectares of land to build yes. 300 thousand units yes. in which only 100,000 flats were going to be delivered within the first five years. Mm. Is this still the figures right now? Yeah, this, this is the case. So you're still continuing with that plan? Yes, we are still keeping the 70 and 30 ratio. And I think this is a, a good uh, ratio um, for the time being. And we do have this uh, 350 uh, hectares of land in hand. But um, as uh, many people know, the first five years, the next coming five years, we have um, 100,000 units um, uh, to be provided. And the next five years, we have 200,000 units to be provided. So the first five years is a challenging time. And we are thinking about ways and stronger strategy to, to, to um, tackle the problem in the next right. five years. Yes, Zachary, some people say that you're in a hot seat. <laughs> That's your area of work is yes. what Mr. John Lee has promised going to come out after his 100 days in office. Yes. So to ask a personal question, how well are you bearing the heat? Ah, um, I am the only principal official who have this uh, task of preparing the 100 days report. So one is that I have accepted um, this appointment as a secretary for housing. I've never stopped working right. and thinking about how to so tackle the So the heat is bearable? The heat is bearable, it's right. there, I know it's there, but it's a driving force as well. Oh, good. It drives good me on. Right, and the government has pledged to reduce the waiting time for public housing from what we said, say six years, five for nine, to say previously three years, and mm -hmm. they set up two task forces Yes. One looking at the land supply yes. and now one looking at how to expedite the construction yes, yes. of the flat. So which one are you on? I'm on the task force for the public housing, right. expediting the public housing supply. And it is led by the deputy financial secretary and we work right away. Uh, we were appointed on the 1st of July and we start working on the 6th of July, which is like the the, the third working day. Right. And um, from that on, we already have uh, four to five meetings and with a lot of um, colleagues from different bureaus and departments joining because housing supply is just is not just the problem of one bureau. We need the collaboration with many right. parties. Right. Um, you just mentioned that I mean, increasing housing supply will be the actual top priority mm -hmm. for the government. And I am sure both CE and yourself, we're going to have some plans going to be yes. having going to be on holistic and innovative. So yeah. let's talk about that when the actual plan comes out at the, at the policy address. Yes. But I'm sure many viewers they've actually messaged me and asked me to ask you what are your, some of the basic principles that yes. you're going to use because yes. it's the same government, yes. it's the same land that we're yes, looking yes. at, the same problem. So can you tell us briefly what are the major principles you'll be working on such as the yeah. modular integrated construction? Yes. I mean that has been used in the um, makeshift hospital, hasn't it? Yes, yes. I've mentioned the three strategy or the three principle. The first is to focus on the quantity and the speed, you know, how to expedite. On the speed, um, uh, there are ways to overlap some um, procedures and overlap some works construction sequencing. So that's my area of profession. How, when you take up the land, how can you uh, uh, plan some activities in parallel, the, the piling works, the infrastructure works, and, and the superstructure works. And the second principle is technology, the introduction of new technology. I've been in the industry for a long time. I'm very keen to see new technology coming. So the modular integrated construction is one of the way. The third element, which I think is very important as an architect, is the people-centric design, the well-being. When we provided the, the, the public housing estates to the people, we want them to, to be happy in, this, in that place. So the, the well-being design of the housing estate is another strategy that I'm, I'm very interested to see in the new estates to come. Right, Winnie, before we go to the break, I want to ask you a question because you mentioned about 
reviewing the the policy of allocating the flats mm -hmm. to to the applicants. So one uh, key housing advisor suggested that the residents of those tiny subdivided flats should get a priority over those that are already living in public rental flats. Mm -hmm. What do you see to that suggestion? Um, I think this is um, a very um, uh, complicated question that we have to um, analyze really carefully because um, flat allocation is affecting um, many people. We now have this um, uh, um, uh, the income um, uh, checking and, and all these um, um, checking to make the system fair to those who are waiting on the list. Right. So, Secretary, we have to take a break now, but stay with us, viewers. We will be right back. Welcome back. With us tonight is Secretary for Housing, Winnie Ho, who has been sharing some of the government's plans to alleviate the housing shortage. So, Secretary, in the first half, we, we touched on the how to allocate the flats. Mm. And actually, I also done some homework that I'd like to ask okay. you on is according to the Hong Kong 2030 Plus, right. a study published last October, they mm -hmm. said the current, current average living space for Hong Kong is about 161 square mm -hmm. feet per person. Mm -hmm. We're lagging behind even Tokyo's mm -hmm. 210 square mm -hmm. feet, mm -hmm. Singapore's 270, mm -hmm. and Shenzhen 300. Mm -hmm. And last December, the government set a minimum of 280 square feet yeah. for building homes for the private sector, but not for public flats. Mm -hmm. Will you do something about that? Now, definitely, um, people want to live in more spacious area, spacious flats. But um, there is a mathematical relationship between the size of a flat and the number of units that we can provide it. Um, each piece of land have, has its plot ratio, and the plot ratio control the total floor area that we can build on that piece of land. The larger each flat, that means the smaller number of units that we can provide out of that piece of land. So in the coming five year, 10 year, we're still in a shortage, a severe shortage. I think the quantity is of the total number of units is still very important. But um, we will look at this um, um, uh, provision of flats in um, some of like our green form, um, the, the, the green form scheme, uh, whether the small unit should be balanced and what are the the percentage of the small unit that is suitable. But I think it takes time that we, we, we can review and look at the, right. this problem. If, if that being the case, how can we reconcile with President Xi's message saying yeah. that Hong Kong residents want bigger and affordable flats? Yeah. So how can we do that? Can we reach that one day? Yeah. Now, first of all, look at the people in the subdivided units. They are really in a very, very small and, and, and underprovided space. First of all, we need to provide more public housing, more decent living area to these people. When we have um, uh, gradually um, walked out of this problem, I think we have the opportunity to look at even larger flats for right. the families. But it will take some time to digest right. the, the issues that we are in hand. How about subdivided flats? I mean, how are you going to get rid of them by 2049? I know it's still got some time away yeah. because this is what um, a deadline set by Xiaobao Long, yeah, right? Yeah. So can we do that as well? Yeah, we, we are looking at the, the figures. We are reviewing our long-term housing strategy and we are collecting statistic uh, figures and, and to study the demand and supply situation in Hong Kong about the public facts. So I hope I will share with you later when um, these figures yes. are in hand. Right, good. Just now we mentioned about you went to uh, started work on the 6th of July Yes. and with Mr. Frank Chan, he yes. was here last year, he said he went to visit all these subdivided flats on his ninth day yes. on his job. Yes, yes. So you, ha you have also visited them, right? Yes, yes. I think there are about 127,000 families yes. in that category. I mean, how bad is it? Can you tell the viewers what you actually see? Yes. What is the situation right now? Yes, uh, very bad. Yeah. Um, as, uh, you know, such a beautiful city in Hong Kong when we have so many good places and um, uh, we call ourselves a metropolitan city when we still see people living in such a condition. Um, I think everyone wants to do something to help. So I always appeal to um, all sectors. If you have the chance to work on public housing, no matter you are a contractor, no matter you are a 
developer or a building professional or my colleagues in housing department try to think how you can help either work faster harder mm. um, um, making the space you know better to help these people I talked to um, one elderly person um, he was in his um, I think 70s mm -hmm. um, he has just a bed and his whole entire home is on the bed. He has been a construction worker, work in the restaurant as a caretaker. He did contribute to this uh, city, right? Mm. He has um, created and, and has a contribution to, to the development of, of Hong Kong. Mm. So he deserves something better when right. he was in his uh, old age. Right, so Winnie, I'm sure your passion will motivate a lot of our viewers to support your continuing Thank you. work in years to come. Thank you. I need a lot of support, actually. Um, although I'm the How secretary... How can we support you? How can the viewers support yeah. you? Uh, although I'm the secretary for housing, I have to shoulder this responsibility and I'm working very closely with um, colleagues in the housing department. But I need a lot of people to support me on the way, like the contractors I'm working with have the best people, best technology, invest more and think about how to build faster using new methods of construction. Building professionals, when they have the chance to work on public housing, try the best, right. build the best. Right. So, Secretary, uh, let's move on to something that has a lot of discussion in the recent times. It's right. about the, the, the Fending Golf Course. Okay. The, some ecological uh, advisors, including the Advisory Council on Environment, yeah district councillors and members of former land supply task mm -hmm. force were having some hesitation right. about supporting the development of Fanning Golf Course. Mm -hmm. I'm, sure, mm -hmm. I'm sure your job is tasked with building more houses, but I've got some questions from many viewers because mm -hmm. they know you're coming. Mm -hmm. So Hong Kong now has changed the situation a lot mm -hmm. in the last few years. Mm -hmm. The economy is starting to downturn, mm -hmm. the, the people having, um, I, mean, I mean, if you look at the street, everything is still not back to normal. Mm -hmm. So do we have another options? Mm -hmm. um, why do we have to so-called sacrifice or destroy mm -hmm. something that already been built for a relatively small number of houses? What do you mm -hmm. reply to that? Now, Eugene, you know this um, land supply problem has go through a, a big debate, a long debate in the last term of the government. And they have decided certain solutions, right? They have agreed on certain proposal. And this term of the government will take the golf course proposal um, and take it forward. We are working on it. Um, uh, I know the Development Bureau, the Environmental Bureau, they are working very hard to answer to the questions raised by the Environmental Panel. And it, this is still the aim of this term of the government. For me, I need to keep the stock of public housing supply. And this piece of land is already counted in this 10-year um, plan. Right. So I need a firm you know, and solid um, stock in hand to, to stabilize my, my supply and to make sure that uh, my targets can be met. I mean, being a professional architect, I'm sure you look at things in a holistic sense. Yes. I mean, ecological value is something that you treasure. Yes. But would you say the, the golf courses is being targeted? Um, I, I, won't, I won't say so. Um, when th this whole issue of land supply has been opened up for a big debate in the last term of government, I'm sure everybody, all the um, stakeholders have a chance to raise their views and it has go through a lengthy process to come up with this um, decision. Right. So I, um, I, I, I trust this sort of um, very um, deep discussion based on uh, rational reasoning and a very, you know, uh, professional sort of um, um, exchange of views based on, based on uh, mutual respect. Right. We respect the views of the right. environmental and I, I panel. I see where you're coming from. I just want to just reiterate that some members of the former land supply task force was mm -hmm. actually having hesitation in supporting. Just to reiterate that again. Anyway, another thing I want to bring up is there's also an increasing sentiment mm. that this issue has kind of been exaggerated mm -hmm. and unfortunately it has brought out deep-rooted structural imbalance in the society between the have and have nots. Yeah. In the light of presidency's call to maintain social yeah. harmony, yeah. are you concerned about this? May actually bring out further the, 
the actual division of a society which which mm. hurts everyone in the last few years yeah i i think uh, the value of these um, committees the environmental panel or the later the town planning board the values of these uh, committee and platform are exactly providing a good environment where everyone can can submit their views and to discuss in a rational and mutual respect manner. Mm -hmm. But the chairman and the members have to make a decision, a timely decision, right? Otherwise, the, 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 the discussion will be on and on. Just a quick question. Have you visited the site before, by any chance, the golf no, course? No, I don't have the chance yet. And when I take up the, 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 the position of the uh, secretary for housing, I have already been, uh, you know, very, very busy, tied up with a lot of other matters, but um, I know the um, um, many people love this site, and many people would treasure the um, ecologic uh, uh, environment of this site. And that's um, that, that that's side of the view. I think the government as a whole has listened to it and tried to balance and find the best solution. For right. Them. I think the fact is because there's there are other alternatives. I think that's the reason why people are bringing this up again mm. with a, a new northern metropolis. Mm. Right. Let's move on quickly before we end the show is internally. I mean, in the interim, what else can we do to increase housing supply? I think we talk about the plot ratios and mm. build taller. Will this be part of your plans in that direction? Um, actually, I think, I think recently you, he, you, you, you may um, see from news that some land, the plot ratio of some, some area has been increased. So it has always been the uh, good efforts of the Development Bureau and also the Planning Department to look at such opportunities. But uh, you know the plot ratio and the infrastructure have an interrelationship. Um, the higher you build, you need more roads and in, uh, transport infrastructure and also other city infrastructure like drainage, water supply and all that. So, um, so far as the infrastructure can support, I think each piece of land will be used to its best potential. Good to know. So thank you, Secretary Ho, for detailing your thoughts on how the housing shortage can be alleviated. Right. We look forward to having you again on the show after CE's policy address. Okay. And have a pleasant evening and good night.